Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the Gaylord National Harbor Convention Center outside Washington, D.C., where we're covering the Air Force Association's annual Air, Space, and Cyber Conference and Trade Show. Coverage here is sponsored by L3 Technologies and Leonardo DRS. And we've got with us Todd Probert, who is uh, the Vice President for Mission Support and Modernization at Raytheon's Intelligence, Information, and Services Business. Todd, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Fago, for having us. Um, it's a pleasure. So, what are, you know, every one of the companies here is is highlighting all series of different priorities. Uh, you guys um, have put a big focus on cyber, obviously, but the chief of staff of the U.S. Air Force, General Goldfein, has said that he wants a real, true command and control system, a multi-spectral, multi-domain command and control system. Talk to us a little bit about your guys' thinking on how to realize that ambitious goal. Yeah, Vago, that's right in our space. Uh, really, it's about the data, it's about speed, and it's about interconnectivity, and we're in the middle of it across the Air Force. Uh, uh, data is, is literally exploding on the battlefield and exponentially increasing. Uh, the, uh, the military that can take that data and, and take it to a decision point and take action inside of what the enemy is doing is going to win tomorrow's war. And well, how do you see, um, you know, what are the differentiators that you see, right? Lockheed and the Skunk Works folks have put together their own approach to it. You know, a number of other companies are looking at that. What do you guys think you're bringing to the party that's different from what everybody else is doing? Well, so at Raytheon, we're looking at the full spectrum. So we've, uh, we've developed exquisite applications uh, from, from the dawn of applications. When you go look at what we're doing in the, uh, the three-letter space to the DOD, we know how to go really bring that technology to the field. We're also concentrating, though, on facilitating uh, the migration of, of these disparate and stovepipe systems into an interconnected web of capability, right? So right now, uh, ISR and command and control are, are separated, and, and we're working with our customers to build that foundational layer that allow them to talk to each other, and then to allow them to employ machine-to-machine -machine algorithms to, to automate a lot of the things that are being done with people today. Um, when it comes to cyber, you guys are trying to stitch together a lot of legacy systems with a lot of future systems. That has been a hang-up sometimes. When you're looking at a battle command network like this, what are some of the challenges that you've got to overcome to make sure that all of these um, scores, if not hundreds of different systems, can merge seamlessly together. Well, it, really it's about the architecture, right? So it, it, looking at uh, opening that architecture up, allowing uh, the, the more uh, deeper use of standards and, and then working the configurations to move that direction. Um, we've taken a strategy of modernization through sustainment, so we're working with the install base of weapon systems that are out there today, helping move through that sustainment process, but then incrementally build that capability in so we can move into the future and, and, and to migrate to those new and open architectures. How does um, the vision, though, translate itself into programmatics? Because right now you could look at it and say, there aren't really that many programs of record that are shooting to achieve this. I know that the, the Air Force is thinking its way through. Bring us up to speed on, on, on where this program is from your guys' strategic planning standpoint. Yeah, it's a great question. And when you look at it, um, a, a lot of the capability that's, that's out there in the commercial space today, the DOD is looking to adopt that and to move it in. So there's a number of efforts to take those programs to the next level. So for example, on our AOC program, Program, so the Air Operations Center uh, out of Langley, Virginia. Uh, we're doing the basic sustainment for that weapon system. But then at the same time, we're partnering with the Air Force on something that they call Pathfinder. Pathfinder is using uh, commercial practices like Agile and DevOps uh, to go through a series of, of various capability drops and actually take the development time that in many cases has been years down to months and even weeks, uh, much like the commercial market's doing today. Um, talk to us about the information management piece of this because um, historically the answer is you know everybody needs access to all the information because you're not sure what information you're going to need when. The problem with it being inundated with too much information is it's overwhelming and you end up actually missing really important things. It's like sort of not having any filters on your email and you're getting 1,200 emails a day. Sure. The unimportant will drown out the, sure. the critical. What are some of the, the thinking you guys are applying, and I know you guys have been working on this, in order to be able to gate this information, um, help port the information, help shape the information, so that it's actually actionable as opposed to just a whole bunch of raw data hitting you in the head? No, again, a good question, and um, when you look at the DCGS architecture as an example of, of where we're at, uh, we're looking at mechanisms to allow all data to come into the, uh, to the architecture and then have everybody use that data. But to your point, uh, we need to make a good sense of how we use that data and make sure that we're not interdating the warfighter with that. So we're, we're putting gating structures in place, so uh, for example, if you're in a particular theater, you only see that data from that theater. If you need something else, you, you, you go into a different system to go look at it. Uh, and then we're, we're employing 
deploying analytics across the board. So uh, the, uh, the, the progress of machine to machine activity uh, in the last couple of years really is, is at a, an exponential uptick and, and we see that increasing. So uh, as we stitch together these various disparate systems into an interconnected web of systems, we're also working within the system to make it more efficient and take the load off the analyst. And, and now you're going to give me about, about cyber, right? Cyber. Talk about, I thought, I thought, I thought your eyes would light up when sure. I said that, but talk to us a little bit about security of systems, right? You guys have made a lot of investment, you bought, um, uh, you, you've bought you know, sort of discrete cyber capabilities, and Tom Kennedy, CEO of the company, has talked about the importance of building that in from the very beginning. Right. There are a lot of systems we have that were not built in from the beginning that way. But talk to us a little bit about how that changes your approach as you engineer these new systems. Yeah, so um, uh, to your point, if you look at the weapon systems that are fielded today, 90, 95, you pick the number of those weapon systems are going to fight tomorrow's battle. Many of these weapon systems were fielded before cyber was even a word. So working with our customers to go through a, a structured vulnerability assessment, and, and again, enabled by those companies that you, uh, that you spoke to. We've bought uh, literally companies across the spectrum, from the sword side to the shield side, and we like to think that Raytheon's coming at cyber in a different way than the other companies that are out there. We're looking at and we're finding more vulnerabilities than, uh, than those others are seeing. We're working with our customers to dogmatically go through and harden the systems that are in the field. So uh, along with that assessment, we Pareto out the, uh, the biggest areas of threat, and then we work to bring tools and techniques in uh, to, to essentially make those systems more resilient. Doing a fantastic job across the Air Force, looking to do more, but uh, I think we're starting uh, to change the game significantly. And Todd, you won the award of the word of the day. Nobody has ever used, at least, this week, dogmatic in an interview. That's awesome, thanks very, very much. Really appreciate it.